Hello everyone, it's Sophia Hodgson from Rusty Blue 85 and I'm finally back on YouTube with another card making video. I'm going to be making an interactive card today with My Favourite Things new Best in Show set. Um, I know it's been a very long time since I was last on YouTube, I've just had one cold after another and as you can probably tell I still have a bit of a runny nose. Uh, so today's card, my background, is going to be made from Bristol Smooth cardstock. Uh, it's going to be a 5x7 card, and here is the My Favourite Things Best in Show stamp set. Uh, and I'm going to be using this tunnel today, and the die cuts out the, the little window in it. And I'm also going to be using the Surf and Turf uh, slider dies. However, the, the dog that goes in the MFT set is too big to go through the tunnel, so I'm going to instead be using the uh, Lawn Fawn stamp set. Uh, so the inks that I'm going to be ink blending today are Mode Lawn and Twisted Citron. I'm going to be using my Clarity blending brush and some foam blenders. I'm also going to be using the Ganzai Tambi pearl colours uh, for a bit of metallic green uh, to ink splatter. And because I'm going to be colouring using my Spectrum Noir alcohol markers, I'm going to be stamping the dog and the tunnel in Memento ink. And here's Mal helping me with my ink blending. Uh, so I sped up the video uh, just because otherwise we'd be here forever. Um, and I'm just using a foam applicator tool to apply the Distress Ink in Mode Lawn first. Um, and obviously you can see that there are all sorts of blotches and things. This doesn't matter too much because I'm going to be splattering with water later and with the metallic green from the Ganzai Tambi colours uh, and also splattering some Mode Lawn as well. Uh, so I'm not too fussed that you can see all sorts of uh, texture in there because I'm going to be adding texture intentionally. Now I'm moving from the foam applicator tool to the Clarity blending brush. I have uh, one brush per colour scheme really and this is uh, the green one. It's quite a large brush um, so I find that it covers large areas quite easily. Uh, I was originally planning to have the ink very dark in the centre and kind of blend outwards. Um, but in the end it didn't really work out like that because uh, I just wasn't liking how stark white it was and I just kept blending and kept blending and then I found that it was all much of a muchness in the end. I'm just blending on some Twisted Citron to add a, a bit of colour, depth and variation to the background panel. And I got some fingerprints here, so uh, I've just found a, a spare piece of paper to protect my fingers and protect the, uh, the background panel. So now I've finished all of my blending, I'm just going to spritz the panel with some water from a, a sprayer. 
Um, that gave a very even coverage of water, so I also took the nozzle out and used it to flick some water onto the background to give much larger uh, mottled areas. And I'm just using a microfiber cloth to pick up the colour. Um, and I'm also going to add some splatters using the Gansai Tambi Green. Um, I added some water using the sprayer and it made uh, it just jump straight out of the the pan onto my, my craft mat. I tried to add some of the water in but it just wasn't having any of it. Um, so these Gansai Tambi watercolours do need uh, a lot of water and uh, a good mix to activate all of the mica that's in them. So I'm just giving it a really, really good mix and flicking it on and Mal has come to help me again. Uh, he's very interested. <laughs> um, he loves to help whenever there's something wet going on so that he can tread in it. <laughs> so I'm just uh, flicking some colour on there for uh, some interest. And the mode Lawn was the darkest colour that I used uh, for painting the background. So I'm also going to uh, flick on some mode Lawn onto the background to add even more texture and dimension. And I'm using my Arteza, the smallest of my Arteza water brushes. There is water in the barrel, but I'm trying not to, to squirt loads of water onto the, the mowed lawn because it's, it's already uh, quite liquid, so I don't want to add too much to it. Uh, and I'm just giving the panel a quick dry using my Ranger heat tool. I prefer to use this one for heating backgrounds because it's it's more gentle than my wow embossing one. Uh, so I'm just stamping the dog from the Lawn Thorn set using the Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And this is on Nina Classic Crest. Um, so I'm no longer using Bristol Smooth. Um, and I'm just using a an acrylic block. I don't really think I need to have a stamp positioning tool for this. I'm just doing a, a quick few stamps. So I'm also stamping the tunnel from the MFT Best in Show. Um, so here I'm colouring using my Spectrum Noir alcohol markers and I did find an image of uh, black and tan Dachshund because my mum used to breed uh, Dachshunds when she was a, a little girl. She had a she had a, a bitch and she would uh, she had a litter of puppies from that dog. Um, so she loves Dachshunds and uh, I'm making this card for her. Um, we've just recently been to a wedding. Oh, and that's Mal in the background knocking stuff off the table. Um, and unfortunately, uh, Mum had a bit of an accident on the dance floor, so uh, she's she's currently on crutches. So um, this this encouragement card is for her. Um, so I've I've stamped two of everything just in case I don't colour things in well. And you'll see later that that was really helpful for the tunnel because I managed to uh, have a, a bit of an oops moment. So I needed to colour and uh, die cut the the other image as well. So for the Spectrum Noir markers for the Dachshund I'm using IG9 and IG10 for the black sections and uh, for the brown I've got TN7 and EB4 for the, the little brown bits like the eyebrow and the, the stomach. So for the uh, the green sections on the tunnel, I'm going to be using LG4 as the darker colour and CG3 for the uh, green bits. And for the larger blue sections, I'm going to be using BT8, BT7 and IB3. Um, and I'm just going to play some music and I'll be back with you after I've finished the colouring.
So now that I've finished all of the colouring, I'm going to start work on the interactive element. Uh, so I've die cut out my little dash and, and the tunnel, and you can see that the die cuts out the middle. Um, I also fussy cut out the middle to make sure that there wasn't any white space, and I went round the edges with uh, a black pen. So I used the die from the My Favourite Things Surf and Turf to die cut a channel for my little dog to run in, and I'm really sorry but that channel is currently off screen, which is very helpful. Um, so I also die cut the little uh, slider elements, uh, and I've die cut two each for the front and the back of the little dog, um, and I've just glued them both together to make it more substantial. Uh, and you can see the slider channel now. Um, and I'm going to be using the You Can Overcome Any Obstacle sentiment that's in the stamp set. I'm just lining it up with my T-square ruler so that it's straight. Um, and I've used my embossing buddy on the background so that my embossing powder doesn't stick where I don't want it. And I'm just embossing that sentiment with Versamark Clear Sticky Ink. And I'm going to be adding white embossing powder. So I'm just doing that in my little tray. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Uh, just doing that in my little embossing tray. Uh, and for this, I will be using my WOW embossing um, heat gun because I find that it's more concentrated where it, it applies the heat, which means that the uh, embossing powder does melt slightly quicker. So I've been letting this heat up off screen uh, and just applying it to the white embossing powder and you can see when it changes that it becomes uh, shiny um, and now I need to add my uh, my foam tape this is what happens when you order from Amazon and you don't pay attention to the dimensions so I thought that this was the uh, the quite narrow stuff that everybody else uses uh, it's it's not it's really fat it's huge um, and so I do have to do quite a lot of creative cutting in order to get it to fit uh, you guys don't need to see that. Um, so I've added the little uh, MFT circles to the... Uh, these are the spin and slide discs. Uh, and I'm just adding that to the back of my Dachshund um, so that he can spin in the, uh, in the track. Now, uh, do as I say, don't do as I do. What I did with my tunnel was I just, uh, I lined up the track with the very middle of the window. And as you can see, his little ear gets caught on the top because I have a load of clearance at the bottom and not enough clearance at the top. So I had to take my card off, off screen, um, remove the double-sided uh, foam tape and do a bit of uh, creative surgery on the little dog's ear and uh, move the move the tunnel slightly. Uh, so now that he moves well in his uh, in his little track and his ear no longer catches on the top of the tunnel, I decided that the rest of the card was quite plain. Um, and uh, as we've just had crufts and uh, we were watching all of the dogs um, on the obstacle courses, I thought that it would be quite cute to have the little hurdle and the uh, I don't know what they're called like the weaves um, so anyway the weaving poles um, and I didn't want to introduce any new colours so I used the same colour scheme that I used for the little tunnel that he runs through um, and I just thought that with the extra hurdles and the weaving poles that it looked more like crufts for some reason um, so I'm just adding those with uh, some Nuvo glue uh, so that they're flush to the background panel uh, because I've already got three layers of uh, foam tape on his little tunnel and I don't want any more dimension on there. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the making of this card. Uh, I don't know if you enjoy watching crafts or dog agility and I hope to see you back on my channel soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.